see what's real and what's not real. Anyway, um, there are lots of reality frames, but this reality frame where that's near to or interacts with the Earth frame, that's what most people think of as the non-physical. You know, that's where the dead people are, right? They're in the non-physical, they're in the spiritual realm. Well, that's also a virtual reality. That's not the fundamental reality either. That's just another virtual reality. Virtual realities come in all kinds. They come in very constrained, and they kind of look like physical matter realities. They come in unconstrained, and you know that's like fundamental consciousness. They come in everything in between, which is um, you know like your spiritual realities, or somewhere somewhere in between. They're all just virtual realities. They're all virtual digital realities. Now, the only thing that is fundamental is consciousness itself. Okay. Origins. Where did it all come from? Okay. When you uh, try to describe what something comes from, you get in this uh, endless regression that says, you know, well, it came from here. Well, then where did that come from? Well, that came from here. Well, where did that come from? Of course, this goes on to infinity. There's an infinite number of those, and you can't really get to the end of that because our knowledge is limited. There's certain limits to our knowledge. We can't know everything. There's some scientists who get uh, upset at that thought, but we can't know everything. And I'll give you a, a real obvious example. Think of a um, bacterium living inside your stomach. Okay, A very, very smart bacterium living inside your stomach. It has an IQ of 200. Brilliant bacterium. Okay, Now, what does that bacterium think about food? Manna from heaven, right? Food just comes. I mean, that's what bacteria do. They decompose food. That's their thing. So they need food. And uh, what do you think they understand about, you know, plows and fields and farmers and horses and cows and trucks and buses and refrigerators and supermarkets and sunshine and rain and all this sort of stuff? What do you think that bacterium knows about those things? <clears throat> Nothing. What could it know about those things? Nothing, even if it was brilliant. Why? Because it's in a subsystem. It can't get out into the super system. It can't get out of the larger system. Why not? Because it's limited to the subsystem. And if you're in the subsystem, you just can't understand what's in that super system. Now, does that mean that super system is just irrelevant? Doesn't matter? Like the scientist that might say, well, that stuff, you know, it really doesn't matter. If we can't compute it, then it's just irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Well, all that stuff is not irrelevant to that bacterium because what food goes down to that bacterium is very dependent on the rain and the sunshine and the refrigerators and the grocery stores and all that stuff. It just doesn't know. But it is very dependent on that. It affects it tremendously. But it can't know. We're in the same boat. There's things that we just can't know. We can't get there unless we go there. If you can't go there, then you just don't know. And all manner of intellectualizing about it isn't going to get you there. You have to go there. Okay, we do this, this very much, uh, we treat this very much the way biology treats uh, the origins of, of uh, beginning evolution here. Okay, they, they say, you know, you have to get to conjecture once you get past your limits of knowing. So they do conjecture and they say, well, you just happen to have the right amount of amino acids and proteins and things and they were bumping around and they made these chemicals and the chemicals just happened to get together. You know, it was random, randomness and out of all the stuff in the ocean, some of them got together and they, they bound up and then pretty soon you had a one cell. And that one cell over a very, very long time, you know, learned a few things because it had this tiny little awareness. Tiny little consciousness, if you like, so it learned, and it learned that maybe two cells are better than one, and it learned you know, how to move little hairs and grow those little hairs so it could move around. It learned lots of things, and then pretty soon evolution does its thing, and here we are. You know, here we are tonight. So we do about the same thing. We say that you, have conscious, you had consciousness and that it was a, um, let's call it primordial consciousness, just one cell, just like the one cell in the primordial uh, sea, and that it wasn't very bright either. It had just a very tiny little minute amount of awareness, but it was aware that it could be this way or that way. There was a little difference. It had that much awareness, just sort of like that biological cell. And then if it could be this way or that way, then it could be this way or that way and the other way. So as it learned to change state, you see, this way and that way, sort of like a one and a zero, isn't it? 
So it started to do more and more of these. It evolved, you know, just like the thing evolved, and pretty soon, you know, you got consciousness. So it is an evolutionary thing. Consciousness is a real system. Okay, now this, that, this assumption that we started out with that says consciousness exists and is it the larger system, well, you have to have this assumption. If you're going to have a big toe, if you're going to get out of the subset, if you're going to get out of that box, at least one of your assumptions in your theory has to be outside of its own causality. If you only work from inside your own causality, you can't get out of the box. Just simple logic. Can't do it. So this assumption is our one assumption that gets us out of the box. Our other single assumption is that evolution exists. And that's not too hard to, to understand because we see evolution all around us. All sorts of systems evolve besides biological systems. So that's not hard to understand either. Okay, um, so the bottom line there is that this assumption that is kind of the leap, this, this big leap of faith, one, it's right up to the doorway where Einstein went and a lot of other very, very smart people and said, it's got to do something, you know, it has to have something to do with consciousness and we know it's not continuous, you know, but we just don't know what it is. And then we have Fredkin and others talking about the digital reality. And so you can see where science is getting right to the door, but they can't open the door. Because to understand consciousness, you have to experience it. It's a personal thing. It's not something you can do objectively. So that's why they got stuck. Okay, so we need this assumption. The fact that we have this one assumption that's not objective isn't like, oh, damn, you know, bad physics. It's like it's necessary. It wouldn't be a big toe without this assumption. Okay. All right, results, some summaries. I'll go over these quickly. The larger consciousness system is an aware, evolving system. It's real and therefore finite. Finite. Many of you think of consciousness as infinite. It's a finite system. All real systems are finite. Infinite systems have to have infinite energy, have to have infinite capacity, and they have all these infinite things. They're not real. But infinite is kind of a state of... Uh, Comparison, really, if you're floating in an inner tube in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you look around you, the ocean looks infinite. And after floating around for a week, you're sure it's infinite. But it's not. It's just big compared to you. And that's the way consciousness is not an infinite system. It's a real system. It's finite. Okay, consciousness evolves by lowering its entropy. The larger consciousness system increases its rate of evolution by subdividing portions into itself and the smaller units that interact with each other. We are an individuated unit of consciousness to chip off the old block, one with all that is. Consciousness is it. We're pieces of consciousness. We're one with all that is. Everything is connected. Everybody is connected. Every consciousness entity is connected. Okay? That's because we're all subsets of one thing, one consciousness. Okay. Physical reality is a virtual reality learning lab designed to help budding individuated units of consciousness call an entity, which is what we are, evolve. That means lower their entropy through experience. Continue the summary. Lowering entropy by improving the organizational uh, profitability of accumulated experience increases the energy, the power, the information available to that evolving entity. If you think about that, remember entropy says lower, or your greater, you know, lower uh, randomness, greater organization. But at the same time, that means 